Hey guys, welcome to our end of the year art show. My name is Brittany Davis and I'm one of the upper school art teachers here at Pulaski Academy. We're so excited to have you join us tonight um, as we walk through this showcase of student work in this crazy year. It has been so inspiring as a teacher in the visual arts department to see all the ways that my students have responded to challenges, limitations with a spirit of exploration as they create and explore. It's been so cool. I hope tonight that you leave inspired and really impressed with all the things that our students have been able to achieve this year. And I hope you're also impressed with my basketball skills. I'm just kidding. Um, but this year, more than any other year, has required a sense of play and flexibility. And I've seen that in our students. And I think you're gonna be blown away by all that they have made during the most interesting and complicated school year most of us have ever seen. So let's get started. We're gonna walk through our People's Gallery and you guys are gonna get a chance to see some of the projects that we've done this year. You're gonna see work from our ceramics students, drawing one, graphic design, and AP and Art One students. It's pretty crazy all that they've done this year. We're gonna stop here for a second. This is a wall of self-portraits. We actually had our own student, Emily Matson be selected for exhibition in this contest. This was actually hosted by Crystal Bridges Museum of Art. This is Emily's piece right over here, which she actually created using Procreate, which is a iPad kind of illustration software that's really, really fun. We use it in our graphic design classes. And so Emily's piece was actually selected out of hundreds and hundreds of high school students all across the state. And her piece will actually be in the exhibition this fall in Crystal Bridges. So we're super excited for her. Um, these are some of our other student submissions, which are all so cool and really show what it means to feel like a high school student during this pandemic, during this season of challenge. Um, and it's so awesome to see all the different unique ways that they have explored themselves and explored what it means to uh, represent who you are as a person. And so these are just really awesome students used um, a material of their choice after experimenting all year with uh, more traditional collage processes, everything from oil paint to plastics to digital renderings like what Emily did uh, using Procreate. So these are just some of the uh, examples of our student submissions and we're really proud of them. You guys are gonna get to know some of our students further down uh, during the show and I think you'll start to see uh, very distinct styles of our students emerge. And as their teacher, I can usually identify from far away who made what because they have such distinct personalities. We're gonna move down a little further and talk about um, a few other things that have gone on this year. This is a collaboration that our AP art students actually did with our AP music theory class. And this is an ongoing collaboration. We actually just finished uh, the second part with uh, Mr. Willis down in the piano lab where our students uh, made a photo series that then they exchanged with a piano lab student and they actually played the music using images instead of sheet music. It was so cool. And this was another collaboration we did earlier in the year where students listened to music and then had to draw sound. It was so fun. A lot of them said that this was one of the most fun projects they did this year and we can see why. We are definitely looking forward to doing more collaborations next year. So moving down, you're gonna see ceramics. These are some dinnerware sets made by our Art One students. They are so unique. These students created a whole place setting and really had to create a concept and execute it consistently through several different pieces. And they're actually functional. They learned about different glaze types, ones that you can actually eat off of that are FDA approved, food safe, and ones that are not good for <laughs> use on things that you eat off of. So really, really fun things for our Art One students. Um, over here on the opposite wall, I'm just gonna kind of bounce back and forth. Uh, you're going to see uh, an installation done by our Art One students uh, and then some drawing process that is really cool. As a drawing teacher, this makes me so excited. This is actually where I get to start to see my students are learning to see. So just like elementary school students learn to read and it's a huge deal, when students can really start to see shading, see light, see features, it's so exciting and I can see that light bulb moment. This is actually just a display of how they learn how to do that. We start with the face, 
We look at different materials like water. Um, and then they have a culminating project where they combine those kind of challenges and they leave feeling really confident in their drawing skills. And it makes me really happy. <laughs> so um, we're gonna move further down here. Um, more Art One student work that's so cool. Um, there is actually going to be an interactive element available through a website that you can see some of these pieces up close because I know this is really fast um, to try to look at everything at once, but um, we love getting to showcase all of these really unique pieces. And this is actually our Veritas publication, which is done by Mr. Vaughn and uh, our amazing students. And it's a really, really awesome collaborative effort between our writing, visual arts, and photography, all these different mediums coming together in a publication. And it's such a neat opportunity for students to be published as a high school student. So we love that. As we move down the hallway, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our uh, AP art students. This is something that they did earlier this year. Um, it's actually a resin painting where students collect things that hold a lot of memory for them and they actually place them into resin and they create these different lenses. So students actually created a painting that they then used as a prop and they had to go out and photograph places that they pass through in their everyday life. Um, so instead of like a filter like you would use on Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, they actually created a tangible physical lens and it was so cool getting to see them reinvestigate their everyday lives with something that they made and really helps them start to think more conceptually as they move into their AP portfolio. So really, really fun project. Uh, this is a wall that showcases our graphic design student work. This is their album art concept that they do where they create a playlist that's really a self-portrait and then they design a case and a concept around that playlist. It's so cool as a teacher. This was such a fun way to get to know my students. Um, each day this last semester they were the class DJ and so they actually got to play their soundtrack for the class and it really just brings the class together and it's such a satisfying project to see come to fruition. They learn about everything from where to place barcodes to designing the practical elements of packaging. And so there's a lot of technical learning in it. And you know, students may complain, but at the end they are so proud and it's really fun. You can actually come through and scan the QR codes placed next to the student works. And you can actually go to that student's Behance profile, which is their website where they've been posting all of their projects this year. So it's really fun, really satisfying. I love seeing other students hang out around this wall and get to know their classmates in a really, really personal way. Um, and I think students really enjoy learning about this as well. Right over on this other wall, we're kind of bouncing between classes. Um, these are different projects from our Drawing One students. And so in Drawing One, we really try to get students comfortable with working large and also starting to source their own images. So this is actually a project where students place um, objects that they use in their everyday life um, on plexiglass, and then they take photographs of those objects that they handle a lot but never really look at, and they take photographs from below. So you'll see images of the actual students in some of these, and so they're looking through to the things that they interact with a lot, and they're seeing them totally differently. And so this is actually done in baby oil and oil pastel, which is really slippery and fun, and helps students kind of loosen up with their mark making style and help them experiment um, and kind of just think bigger in terms of their own personal expressive mark making. It's really, really fun. Um, we had a lot of students uh, make a lot of positive growth in this project as they start to work bigger and bigger. Further down um, the hallway, you're going to see different illustration examples from drawing students. So these same students in drawing one are also pushed to work in different mediums. Uh, digitally, I talked about Procreate earlier, and so each of them had to do a Procreate experiment. And then they also got to select their own illustration uh, experiments to do and so it's a really fun unit where students start to explore not just realistic renderings but their own personal aesthetic and so each student you'll see kind of clumped together um, also they have the same QR code by their work 
And it just kind of shows all of their work that they've made this year, and it links to different illustrators that they follow, professional illustrators on Behance, where they get a lot of ideas. And so throughout the year, students uh, do different projects based on those professional illustrators, and it really starts to help them think about their own expression. And I love seeing how they grow over the course of the year. It's really, really cool to see how diverse uh, such a small group of one class can really be. So it's super fun as uh, a teacher seeing them just connect that that quickly. We're going to walk out through these double doors really fast to uh, a project by our graphic design students. It's out here because it actually is an outdoor project. It's really cool, I think. Um, so this is actually a concept based off of uh, Rural Studio, which is a part of the architecture program at Auburn University. So students research Rural Studio, the 20K house, which is actually a house that is made under $20,000, which is not a lot of money. And so they actually take that concept of how can we design a home for a low amount of money with resource locally uh, materials, and how can we create something for that? So they actually were not doing it for a human, they were designing for a bird. And they created an infographic. So you can see outlined in green some of these. These are actually designed by students. Um, and so they weren't allowed to use words because birds can't read. Um, but with images, they designed a instructional tutorial, kind of like IKEA packaging, of how to create this home. And so you can see some of the examples, the models, here below. Um, these are just hilarious. This was probably one of my favorite projects this year. This is by a student, Rich Castleberry. Um, he created his own concoction for making glue from moss, mud, and water that he found somewhere around campus. Um, and just seeing students be playful and having to work under a time crunch and be really creative and imperfect is so satisfying and really gives them an experience of a real world design experience where you don't get to have everything perfect and you have to work with what you have. So this was a super fun project to see come to fruition. I even brought in some baby birds for my students to play with. So I think it was really a memorable experience for them in designing for a client like a bird <laughs> and explaining something not that easy to explain with images. So I'm super proud of how these came out and I'm excited to see what a lot of these students are going to do in advanced graphic design next year. So we're going to head back through here um, into our final loop. And again, it's a lot to see. Um, but most of our student work this year is interactive, and so students either have a Behance profile or their own website that you can access and see more of what they've done. We're going to walk in here and look at our advanced student work, where a student will take a course like AP Art, and they develop a portfolio over the course of an entire year, and they do things like research, present their ideas, get feedback, make adjustments, and it's really, really fun to see them grow over the course of a year. And I think you'll see how that process has really benefited them and helped them create this really unique approach to art making. All right, so we're gonna do a lap. As we walk in here, you're gonna see a kind of time lapse of development. If you start on the left side down here, this is actually kind of showing how our students in drawing learn to see, as I was talking about before. As you go down, you'll see these images get more and more accurate, if you will. Um, so students are drawing, drawing live models and you can see the growth, or I can because I know them, <laughs> but you can see the growth and changes in students as they learn to look and see really well. And so uh, they'll emerge more detail, more positioning and proportions that are really, really strong. And so as you get down here towards the end, it's really fun to see the growth in just a few short weeks of drawing live, which students complain about and hate. And then at the end, they're like, Ms. Davis, thank you so much for making us do that. I can see that I've gotten better. And I just silently smile. Uh, but it is a really, really helpful, really challenging thing to, to do. And it's very humbling because no one's good at it in the beginning. <laughs> but the outcome is really, really cool. So these are more works by drawing students. 
um, as they learn to see detail. So you can see the zooming in, capturing things um, really big or really small in a really big way. So that's just kind of an inside look of how you actually learn to draw and see. Um, and that's kind of the not magical, really practical explanation of how you actually become a better artist. Um, so we're gonna look at some advanced student work here on the wall as we kind of move around. This is a student, her name is Kate Martin, and she is in our pre-AP art class. And so these are some of her experiments. You can see all different things from uh, wearables to paintings on wood to actual photographs of other objects that she's created. And it's just so fun to see um, the exploration in the work. And other students here, there's actually four students on this wall. You can kind of tell their styles as you move down. This is a, an AP student, Molly Conine, very interested in a lot of textiles and sculptural things. This is Emily Matson, who does a lot of work in Procreate. She is the one I was talking about earlier. And so she prints these works at all different dimensions. And it's so amazing to see just her work ethic as she's experimented this year. Uh, I'm very proud of her. And then Maggie also is a pre-AP um, art student, Maggie McDonald, and so she has this really strong interest in kind of nature, human hybrids. She loves science. She's always helping me propagate plants in my classroom because I have uh, way too many. Uh, and so it's really fun to see how she's grown and developed this year, and I can't wait to see what these students will do next year when they create their actual portfolio. This is another student, Catherine, who um, is an AP student, and you can see kind of the evidence of her research uh, this year. She does a lot of these really dense, collaged images that have to do with time and stress and how she processes that in her artwork, and she is just so much fun to watch as a student. She's always experimenting, and she just has this real urgency in her work that you can actually see in her mark making. Um, it's just really inspiring, and I, I can't wait to see what she continues to do um, as she goes on to college. I'm going to sneak through here. Uh, so as we walk through the People's Gallery, some of these images on the wall um, are from students as well made this year. There's just a few um, that were made at the end of the semester last year and were never able to be shown um, due to COVID. Uh, and so these are really awesome too, works from all of our different art courses. These are some different uh, wood drawings that my drawing students got to do this year. This is a really old style of drawing, if you will, and so students love anything with fire. And so this is such a satisfying project for them. They get to burn their drawing and then stain it, polyurethane, um, sand it, and it's really physical. And they oftentimes will go on to do other experiments in this. Um, this was actually a project where they mapped their childhood, so the sites that they went to the most um, as a child that were most memorable. Um, so it's really a fun way to get to know each other in our class and as a teacher it's so cool um, where you start to see them connect data as inspiration for artwork and I really feel like it's um, kind of a kick-starting project for them as they start to develop into more independent things. Uh, so we're going to move a little bit further down here. These are some graphic design projects that our students did. They actually created a landscape design idea book of our campus. And so they used a software called iScape. And you can see these are pretty detailed and involved. <laughs> um, where they would take a site, for instance, and then they would redesign um, the place with their own aesthetic and so they had to use yellow and blue and some other stipulations like budget shade all of these kind of things that landscape designers think about and they did an amazing job we were outside trying not to get run over as they did these renderings and you can see some of them just went crazy um, and these are sites that they go to a lot so it was so cool to see them problem solve um, with their own experience, places that they have gone to for several years, and solutions to some challenges around our campus. So it really helps them think like a real designer and really see how that has an impact on a place. So it was really fun to see students just take ownership of this process and also use some pretty challenging 
digital design software. So it was really, I think, a memorable thing for them and a great way to problem solve and think like a designer in a real world situation. Um, these are some other uh, projects that students have done this year. We have packaging design projects from our graphics class uh, where students, again, have to think through logistics of how to design real packaging for different objects, everything from soap to things that are edible. Uh, so really fun. This is uh, another project that we did last semester where students designed a dog bowl and we actually were featured on THV 11 when we went down the Humane Society to donate them. It was so fun. It's probably the cutest project that we did this year. Um, and so this is one that um, I just kept as an example to use. Uh, but we had so much fun doing something and benefiting our community. Um, and I think students just really enjoyed giving to being able to give back during a year that was just very interesting. Um, so we're going to walk through out the door, look at a few more drawing projects from students. Um, you can see again how they are experimenting with different materials and looking to see really accurately. So this is actually a project where students had to blow up a pine cone, which as we know is very small, um, one that they found in the parking lot, and they had to make it as big as their paper. <laughs> and so a lot of them panicked um, and you know had to problem solve. How do you create um, a blown up image with something that is so small? And really look really carefully and slowly. And I just love how these turned out. And they probably would say that they do now, even though that was probably a pretty painful experiment. <laughs> um, another project where students are experimenting with um, a really strong light source and really trying to capture light and how it reflects off of a surface, like a face. And these are students that have really worked at this all year and done different challenges, different timed assignments, and then uh, culminating in these larger pieces. We're going to head out here to our last wall and then talk about some awards. So this wall back here is showing our last two pre-AP students. On the left, you're going to see Zoe Rhodes, who is a pre-AP art student. Zoe is um, amazing. She is quiet and complicated, and you can see that detail in her work. Um, she started to work large towards the end of the year and is really excited about uh, projects for her portfolio starting next year. Um, and then as you work down the line, you'll see all these different experiments that Zoe's done. She's worked in different materials. And then she's also had to revise and recreate her own work. So it's kind of like recycling. We actually do a project called the Revision Project, you can see here, where students take a work that they don't feel like is successful, and then they have to recreate it in four different ways. <laughs> and that's not easy to do. Um, but it's so cool to see students um, take time to slow down and really assess their own work. Um, and then as you move down the wall, you're going to see Megan Taylor, who is another pre-AP art student who works very colorfully and very large. And so Megan's worked in everything from uh, oil paint, acrylic, to icing. This is actually strawberry icing <laughs> that she dyed with ink. Um, and then some other different materials, uh, making her paintings start to pop out. And I just love... Uh, how Megan flows. It's been really fun to work with her this year and see her loosen up and become more confident as an artist. And she's just done such a great job having to work remotely and then in person and just deal with all the challenges of this year in a really graceful and beautiful, obviously, way. So I love that. Even uh, working in wood, um, she's just really going for it. So again, these are all students we get to have next year in AP and I'm so, so excited. <laughs> and um, these are just a last few projects I wanted to talk about before we um, go through our awards. These are some projects from our ceramic students. Um, on the right down here, you can see these soap dish holders. We start off with a lot of practical, functional pieces in Ceramics 1. And these are so fun and also useful for students. You can see all the ways that they approached um, a container and a holder. 
Um, and then as we move down the table, um, you can see these are actually plaster drawings where students learned about how to create molds. We learned about the history of toilets and how ceramics um, really revolutionized uh, bathrooms, which is very interesting to them. Um, and so they actually took photos around campus. You can see them here, um, our football field, uh, the Bruin Bear, all different sites. And so they actually drew this into wet clay and then poured plaster into that and popped out their drawing. So it's a really satisfying, very physical process and really helps them see that there is more to ceramics than just um, small sculptures. So I think students really enjoyed working with that material this year. Um, as they like to say, it feels like gooey yogurt. Um, and so then a few other projects that are really fun and satisfying for ceramic students, we have a candle holder where students actually got to design a, a ceramic candle. And then they mix their own scent poured their own wax and learned how to correctly, some of them, um, correctly install a wick and just think through something, again, very functional and very practical and how they could create their own ideas around that. And then the last uh, project here is the jewelry and wearables projects that ceramic students did. This was so fun. Um, they learned how to create things that are smaller and functional and wearable. And I think it was a really fun, satisfying thing. We had a lot of croc pins. That was the number one made project, which I didn't know was a thing. But um, apparently that's a huge thing to accessorize your crocs. Um, so I have a lot, a lot of those if you need any inspiration. <laughs> and then more jewelry holders as well. So... Um, I just have to say, yeah. the folks at home, you can't smell these. It smells <laughs> they smell awesome. They smell so good, yes. <laughs> Lemongrass was really popular for some reason. So, yeah, strong uh, strong scent of, of lemongrass. So it was really a fun, fun thing. So we're going to head into some awards. I know this is really fast. I wish I had more time to talk about all the amazing things that our students have done this year. Um, but I'm really glad that you guys tuned in tonight to see just a highlight of everything the students have explored and created this year. It's really impressive. And I've been so happy to see the resiliency and flexibility of our students, which is why I wanted to highlight just a few. I wish I could talk about all of them. Uh, but I really wanted to highlight a few categories. Uh, the obvious one, uh, when you have students that are just exceptional um, in their creativity, that's really special. And I want to highlight a few students in each of our courses um, and also talk about overall just the really exciting achievements that our art department was able to um, achieve this year. We had, I'll, I'll actually read them off to you. This is our, our bragging rights. Um, we had a student accepted into the pre-college program at KCAI, Bria, she's a drawing student. We had over 35 students participate in National Portfolio Day, which is a really awesome event that some of the top art schools in the country actually review student portfolios, and they get to present their artwork to professors, grad students, and it's really fun. We had a, a great turnout. Uh, we had seven students selected for the Celebrating Art publication this year. We're really proud of all of them. Um, and then we had a student, Emily, we I talked about earlier, that was selected for the in-person exhibit at Crystal Bridges this coming fall. So really excited about everything our students were able to achieve this year um, in, in terms of all the challenges and just logistics and just working together as a team. It's really commendable. So here's our uh, awards. We're going to start off with... Um, most original aesthetic. Um, this is something that I personally love getting to uh, think about and award for students. In graphic design, it's so obvious when you see a student that just stands out um, in really creating their own unique perspective at such an early age. So I have several students that um, achieved this award this year. The first one being Bailey Robinson. Congratulations, Bailey. Bailey is definitely an original aesthetic. I love everything that she's made this year. Our second student that's receiving this award is Jessica Horton, who is just such a star. I've loved having her in graphic design this year. And Eva Balos, she is amazing. So, so honored that she's in graphic design and can't wait to see what she will do next year. 
And then our last student receiving the most original aesthetic award is Marla. She is a true star. I love everything that she creates. It's amazing uh, her just innovation in terms of material and idea. Uh, a few other categories that we have um, is this is an award that I think is probably the most important as a creative person, uh, the Dynamic Work Ethic Award. I think some of these students deserve a prize due to their uh, having to navigate being virtual drop-offs, being in person, going back. Um, so their attitude has been amazing. Uh, by far, the one that comes to mind and rightly deserves this award is Blakely James. She is such a powerhouse. She is talented and also just so positive. So Bailey, Blakely, congratulations. You definitely deserve it. Um, Joyner Love, also the Dynamic Work Ethic Award. Uh, Joyner actually received this in both drawing and ceramics. She is really something else. Ryan Grinwald, another Dynamic Work Ethic Award. Congratulations, Ryan. Um, she really, nothing can stop that girl. Uh, Becca Connell also received the Dynamic Work Ethic Award in Graphic Design. Congratulations, Becca. You definitely deserve it. And Ava Grace also receiving the Dynamic Work Ethic Awards. Congratulations, Ava Grace. Um, we also have a few more students that um, deserve this recognition. Definitely a star, uh, Anna Abstin in our graphic design class. Never quits, always turns in the most dynamic projects. And last but not least, Emily Matson uh, definitely has a superior work ethic. Um, you guys were amazing this year. I was blown away by your consistency and never being willing to complain. <laughs> so um, our last category is um, most creative in each of our classes. This is really hard to select because there are so many students that show this skill set. Um, obviously, one of the first ones that deserved this award in our graphic design class is Riley Craig. Her projects were so amazing this year. I'm really proud of you, Riley. Um, Rich Castleberry also receiving the most creative award in graphic design. Very rightly deserved. Carly Ray Lagbong is receiving most creative in Ceramics 1 for her awesome projects all year. Layla Almout. Um, I can't, I always mess up your name. Layla, you know, you know I love you. You deserve the Most Creative Award. Your projects were so cool. And Logan Scaife, the uh, Most Creative Award in Ceramics. You did so great this year. Maylee Rollins is our last Ceramics Most Creative Award. Maylee, you were such a star this year. Congratulations. And then moving on to our drawing most creative awards, Maddie Kimmerling, you were amazing this year through everything. I've loved getting to see you grow. Congratulations. And Bria Tudor, most creative in drawing one, not surprising. Um, congratulations. And then last but not least, in drawing one for the most creative award is Parker Fuller. Parker, congratulations. You deserve it. Um, we have just a few more awards in our pre AP art class. Most creative, uh, it was hard, so we had a tiebreaker between Zoe Rose and Megan Taylor. You guys both did an amazing job. Congratulations. Uh, this was such an awesome year. I'm, I know I've said it before, but I'm just so impressed with the flexibility of our students in the challenges that they had in the classroom and at home and just with everything going on this year. And we are so excited about all that's gonna happen next year. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I hope you just got to see a glimpse of all that's being created and explored here in our visual arts department. And so please come and check it out. Um, like I said, most of our work is interactive. So if you would like to see any other work created by these students, they have accessible sites that you can navigate for yourself and really get into more of the backstory behind what inspires them and why they make what they do. So thank you so much for joining in and we'll look forward to seeing you guys in person soon.